So I'm going to call the meeting to order um, Monday, July 8th at 6.04. And any from select board members, any adjustments to the select board agenda? Sounds like Diana might have one or two. Where's my agenda? This? I'm deciding. Okay. Oh, we had the library trustee thing. Okay. That came from Steve. I thought he was going to be here. Library trustee. And is that okay to do it in updates and other business? Down at the bottom? Well, then he'd have to stay here for the whole meeting, but if he's not here, yeah. I okay. Guess that's. All right. Too if bad not, we'll put it there. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll yeah. sneak it in someplace. I might have an adjustment, but that depends. Robin, um, when you do the town clerk's report, were you going to talk about the phone call that you received um, about the possibly dangerous person in West Woodbury? Is that going to be part of your report? Oh, space that up. Oh, okay. Because if you're going to talk about it, I know. Here's a, oh, here's Steve. If you're going to talk about That's it, I won't try to add it, but if you weren't going to mention it, I feel like we should at least touch up on it. We talked to the people up here, right? I did talk to them. I talked to Hardwick PD, so I have a little bit of information. Not we also have it on under uh, executive session. So right. anything that you don't want to talk about in public. I mean, I feel like it's a public issue, so oh, okay, fine. I feel like whatever we know should be shared. So I did notice that, welcome Steve. Hello. I, he, Steve did show up, so maybe we could do that a little bit earlier, maybe um, after our interview with Mr. Dumas. Sure. Okay, we'll throw Steve in there. Any other uh, adjustments? All right. Hearing none, we can move on. Um, we all got a copy of the minutes. Um, and the next item is to approve the minutes. Is there a motion from one of the board members? Did you get my email earlier today? Where I, I, I mean, I'm uh, sure I did. I haven't read it, had a chance okay. to read it yet. Um, Lizzie suggested beefing up the uh, discussion about the uh, signs a little bit, so I did that. I did see that. Okay. okay. So I should review that quickly before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that the only change, Diana? Yeah. Okay. Well, there was one th thing I didn't have. I didn't have the full number skip for that 17,000 and something from FEMA for a mitigation project. For Cameroon? Yeah. So I just put 17,000 plus, plus or minus. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have the last three numbers. <laughs> That's all right. It's just, a, it's just an estimate. Anyway. What? It's just an estimate. Anyway. Oh, okay. Okay. 17,000 is close <laughs> You want to make a motion to approve? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. There's a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Minutes are approved from June 24th, 2024. Um, are you signing? Oh, yeah, I forgot to sign. Yeah. You signing more than one? Oh. Yeah. Yep. I guess we only need to sign one. Oh, no, you, yeah, okay. Sign them all? No, you just have to sign one. Yeah. This, oh. ec this extra one is just Lizzie's. Thank you. I'll keep this one up. No. No? Keep this one because this one says extra on it. But this is the one. Okay, then I'll sign this one. <laughs> oh, you would sign this one. <laughs> there Thank we go. you. All right. Steve, so you're on the agenda, but um, is there any other public comment from anybody other than folks that are on the mm. agenda? Seville? No. All right. <laughs> All right. So seeing that there's no other public here that want to make a comment, um, we'll move on to Mr. Fix, Hardwick Gazette. Thank you all for putting me on the agenda. Um, I think that, well, first of all, thank you to the Woodbury Fund for sending us funding to help with uh, bringing on community or paid journalists and helping fund an additional workstation, or part of an additional workstation, we need to, to do that. No, you're welcome, but that really doesn't have anything to do with us. 
It's part of the record now. That's but, right. Uh, yeah. Public is listening, so yeah. it's already yeah. and, and you have something to do with appointing people. That's true, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> forget I said White strike. Um, but also, as, as the Gazette returns from its sleepy self to being more involved, um, we're trying to work with and understand what towns are doing with public notices. And uh, I came upon a notice in the Caledonia Record that did not appear to be an advertisement. And I couldn't find it on your website, so I called Robin to find out how Caledonia Record would have gotten it. Apparently, it wasn't. We was didn't put anything in Caledonia Record. Tom Darkest, we did. Maybe it was, I'm sorry. No, we did before. Right. We have used it before. It was the yeah, time. Yeah, let me talk about it. No, I, I said down on record. It's a time zone. Okay. Um, and so that's really what started the conversation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I think, you know, given what I heard from, from Robin and our exchanges, Diana, I guess my, my question is, you know, over the course of the next year, we hope to find funding, and it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. If we were still in print, we probably have a better chance of regaining that lost local evidence. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is funding the first six months of print to regain that. And so I think at this point, my question to the select board is, um, would you be able to share with us, and it doesn't have to be public, though it's probably on your budget somewhere, what you're paying now for ads that potentially the Gazette could regain if we went to print and became our paper record Because mm -hmm. that would help us estimate what mm -hmm. our funding is. Well, as far, you know, how far we go with our ads really depends on what we're looking for. You know, if we're looking for a road crew member, we'll probably go to the Caledonian Record and the News and Citizen and the Times Argus. But as far as an official notice like uh, zoning board notice that has to be published, um, those will sometimes do both, but we have to do the Times Argus. That's what I was told by VLCT last year, that it has to have a be a newspaper that's in print, in general circulation in the area, although, you know, yeah, that's a question. Allowed, until, <laughs> until July 1st, you were allowed to put public notices in digital publications under the pandemic, under the state. Oh, program. okay. But we oh. the CT, mm -hmm. who is a private organization, not a public organization, has their reasons for doing what they do. But at this point, um, it does have to be a print But if it's something that we, you know, that we want to share, we want to get input from people, we go to the Gazette, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just to start the conversation, we can... Is that a budget number, Diana? Do you know that we... Advertising the budget, there is fiscal year is 500. 500. That's it? Oh. Yep. Mm. All right. It was 700. And that would include both the job, you know, the wanted, as, as well as public notice. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope, I lied. So, we have also the highway a separate budget for advertising. Yeah. So the one I gave you was for the general fund. As far as hiring, I think we got to talk on some wood here. Get some response from. Yeah. Yeah. 
And thank you for uh, your work in reviving the Gazette. Thank you. To its service. Well, it's current level. I'm spending as much time finding funding to keep it alive <laughs> week to week to make yeah. it mm. we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a uh, sustainable operation. Mm. Um, and I also wanted to be here just to, to see how your select board meetings go. We do have a, uh, an intern named Ramona Parker uh, who will probably be coming regularly. Mm. Oh. I'll send you, you a note. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Steve. May I ask a question of our guest? Of course. Uh, and I'll defer to the board. Absolutely. But, yeah. Of course. I, I'm just curious, how do, you, how do you foresee a local paper in this day and age reinventing itself? Exactly, <laughs> for example. It was in print publication and then to digital, hopefully coming back. What means, by what means can you? Can you Local community paper like that make it today? Well, um, local community papers are making it. The Barton Chronicle continues to publish. They, they took advantage of pandemic funds and used it to keep funding what they were doing. The Harvard Gazette <coughs> chose to stop doing that, which meant we lost the network of 50 local outlets. We lost the uh, the printer contract we had, we lost the mailing contract we had. Um, the news and citizen does it at no charge. It sends out, there, you know, you don't know the news and citizen in Woodbury. We know. But um, they're now, they expanded during the pandemic into Hart, Greensboro, Greensboro Bend, East Hartwick, Trashbury, Greensboro. Mm -hmm. um, we see it being a combination of grant funded, philanthropic, both corporate and, um, and uh, other organizations. Advertising is going to be a big part of it. And uh, I think you know, we, we could talk about advertising in the digital, print advertising in the digital age, but what print mm -hmm. does that digital government is sit on your coffee table for a week and sit mm -hmm. the, yeah. when we print 10 copies an hour, it's amazing the, the comments we get from the copy that's at the front seat coffee or Nikki the barber in the village. Really? Um, or the libraries. And I'd love to figure out a way to get it down to the Woodbury's library as well. Um, so, and it's a matter of being local, I think. There's nobody else who's going to sit here in your Woodbury Select Board meeting and write about what your road crew were. Last week, we put a picture of your new fire station yeah. on the paper. And <laughs> is it valuable today? Maybe, maybe not. You drive by and see it. But somebody who's not in Woodbury, mm -hmm. who's a summer person in Woodbury, in the winter sees what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, 50 years from now, someone will have a way to find out what happened historically in Woodbury. And the Times Argus is got on your record in the Burlington Free Press seven days. D.D. Digger might do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But we hope that we can connect with people in the town to, to make it important. So that's, that's how we expect it. I wish you well. Something that leaves to my mind, clippings on the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. As long as we all eat refrigerated foods, I think <laughs> there'll be a place in our refrigerators that's playing this. Little clippings from the paper. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. should, uh, we should show up at the, at the farmer's market with your picture now. Right. For a small, yeah. for a small price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And especially now that you're distributing it for free. Mm. Well, that's what we said. The Harvard Gazette is free to read, not free to create. Oh. And we oh. hope that that will connect with people thinking maybe my checkbook could be useful. <laughs> So if you go back to a paper version, is it still going to be free? Uh, consultants have a very outlook on that. I think we can do it by leaving it to be free. And I think it's important because there are people who need it to, to see job ads mm. who can't afford to pay 50 or $60 a year. 
Mm. And uh, which is what it would cost us at least to do. Yeah. And so, but if one person pays a hundred, then it pays for another person. Mm -hmm. Or two people pay for a hundred, it pays for another two people not to get or to mm -hmm. not have to pay for it. And, and I think local news is critical. It really is critical to know what our families, mm -hmm. what our towns, families are. And the two things that get a red box are obituaries and police reports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and once people get in for that, they want to know what their neighbors are doing. Mm -hmm. And so another thing we're, mm -hmm. an idea we're hatching, first of all, we're getting ready to do uh, something together with HCTV, bringing in all the candidates to do both a, an interview and print for mm -hmm. the Gazette and a televised mm -hmm. version of it cross linked to each other. Um, and anyway, so there, you know, there are things we're trying to mm -hmm. do to expand beyond just straight print and work with other media. Mm -hmm. So one more suggestion, I think this is a good one. I don't know if you've considered it, but towns um, customarily have on their uh, an annual town meeting agenda um, items for social services. I don't know if uh, a local paper would qualify, but it's um, so. Yes, oh, you mean for the for the appropriations? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've we've thought about that. Um, we're not sure. Okay. I mean, you are a nonprofit now, right? Uh, right. We we have a fiscal sponsorship. I have a letter from the IRS asking for another piece of paper. I think very quickly. Oh, but yeah. our intent is certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, we give money to HCTV. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah. I mean, that's what. And maybe you know, a, a token. I think anything we would ask for would be a token yeah. to show to funders right. that we have support with right. So, yeah, maybe a few hundred dollars mm -hmm. would, mm -hmm. yeah, would serve yeah. us in that regard. So. Yeah, thanks for yeah. that. Good question. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing it. <coughs> Mr. Du is it Dumas? Dumas? Dumas. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so the next... Uh, Item on the agenda agenda is animal control officer, and I understand you've already taken care of a few things mm -hmm. on Woodbury's behalf. Mm -hmm. No? No, that was the other guy. No, <laughs> you want to go up here so we can talk? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Dean Mercier, who I called on because I had read his something on Facebook or something that he was doing uh, animal control officer for several <coughs> area towns. Yeah. And I asked him if he'd uh, think of adding us to his list and I never heard back from him, but he did talk to you. So yeah. here we are. He wants to cut down on some of them, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you help. Yeah. And is something that you think you might like to do? Yeah. yeah. I help him out once in a while here and what kind of calls does he respond to? Just noise. Like noise, yeah. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing major. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, had you thought about um, how we might pay you? Like per call? Or we were giving Kim Silk like $500 a year because when we were paying him really by the hour, he wasn't charging us so much. Yeah. <laughs> so we needed at least $500. <laughs> but uh, we can. That worked. You have any, any questions for Mr. Dumas? Sure. So, like when you've responded to barking complaints, I'm assuming that's what you mean noise complaints, barking dogs. Yeah. Um, how do you handle those situations? Just ask politely, talk to them calmly, mm -hmm. just ask them to keep it down. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's stopped, but mm -hmm. second time it's a little more stern. I was gonna, I thought I had an example for you because we've had a dog over this way about a mile who goes about two miles to South Woodbury, where there are dogs that are not spayed. 
<laughs> female dogs. And this male was, uh, has been causing problems in a couple of different places. One is where they have, they breed dogs, so they have females that are in heat sometimes. And uh, so I was gonna suggest, to ask how you would deal with that, but then Chris told me that that guy's had his dogs paid, or er, fixed in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but how would you do deal with that? Just go to him and Just go over and have them hook it up, or put it in the cabin, make sure they keep track of it. You know, it's not illegal to have your dog not fixed, but it would be a nuisance. This is a copy of our current animal control ordinance that you can have. We have another one that's in the process of being adopted, but uh, in the meantime, that's what we've got. So in terms of, like, uh, aggressive animals or violent animals, um, what, how do you guys, you and uh, Mr. Mercier, is it? How, how do you deal with those situations? Oh, we usually get a hold of an officer to bite somebody or stuff like that. Get yeah. a hold of what? The police department. Oh, and yeah. To see how they want to proceed with yeah. the events. Well, we don't have that, you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's what you would do in our <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Aggressive, though. So what is hard? list of the dogs that they have registered or licensed for the town? We can get access. Oh, what is easier for you? If it's by the person's name, if it's by the tag number? Or both? both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Um, so this is an issue that I do think we're facing in town right now, so I'm curious how you'd handle it. Um, there are a few dogs that have been reported to be aggressive, but to my knowledge, they haven't actually bitten anybody yet. Um, so I imagine you probably can't call the police. What would your thoughts on it, how you'd handle it that? It depends how aggressive. Okay. They, like lunge people and stuff like that. You'd have to have record of it, and then if it happens three times, then you'd have to go a different way. Okay, and what would that different way be? The go through the police department and court systems have the dog put down if it bites and stuff like that. Okay. Are they usually pretty responsive when you do try to get a police officer involved? Yeah. You call the courts and they're usually real responsive. Especially if it's mm -hmm. a child or something. Mm -hmm. We have had one situation a few years ago where our animal control officer had to call in the sheriff's department. I think it was the sheriff. I don't think it was the state police. Yeah. But they did come and help him with a case of having to take a dog. Yeah. You have to have them yeah. with you in order to mm -hmm. see Yeah, we do have a contract with the Washington County Sheriff. Okay. So yeah, these questions? aggressive dogs that you're talking about, are they like chasing people on bikes or something? Or? Um, not on bikes that I've heard specifically. These are dogs that have, it's been brought up before. There's dogs up towards Old Quarry Way. There's the dog in West Woodbury. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, mm. Ones that we've talked about, but there hasn't really been any solution. Mm. So Mostly yeah. chasing cars. Okay. Like chasing cars, but I also think acting, I think people are no longer walking in certain areas because no, they're no. afraid of some of the dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second, that's secondhand information, not mm -hmm. firsthand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? For um, Ed? Yeah. And Kim's still on to be the border? Not oh, yes, he is. He did say Kim Silk has a kennel. He doesn't use it anymore as a commercial kennel, but he has one. And if he's willing to work with whoever, if yeah. you need to take a dog and have it kenneled for, I don't know how long it is before you can take it to the Humane Society, but. I think it's seven days. Yeah. yeah. It was ten, but yeah. I think it's seven. Yeah. So he's still willing to do that, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. What would be our next steps to be? Well, we can either talk about it later in our executive session or we can just do something now. 
<laughs> if the cost of the town is the same as it's been, yeah. I would be in favor of appointing you, if you're willing. And yeah. We appreciate it. Then that would be a motion? Uh, Sounds like a motion. Unless yeah. you guys want to talk about it. I'll make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's a motion on the table to approve Mr. Dumas as the animal control officer for the town of Woodbury. Any further discussion? Hearing none. I'll so reverting back to the statement. What? Reverting back to the statement. Well, if he works for you know, if he works hard enough. <laughs> you won't get it until next year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the year probably. But yeah, that makes sense. Do you think? The stipend as opposed to the... Alfie had just a quick question. Yeah, just a quick question. I'm wondering if, if this position would also handle large animals. No. Like horses or cows or... We have not passed the large animal ordinance yet, and I have a feeling it's doubtful that we will. And if we did, it might make it even harder to find somebody to do the job. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> but, yeah. that's not saying you won't get a call. You still need to get a call. Who's I know. People call, call the office. They call the office and say, who's your animal control officer? We give them your name and number, then you're stuck. I mean, then you get, then you get the call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, just to clarify the stipend, so it'll be a fixed stipend of $500 yeah. per yeah. year. And that's acceptable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve? I think the good form you should have a second on the motion. I didn't hear one. I think we're small board. Oh, so you small board rules. We don't need small board rules. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Aye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Nice to have that role filled. Before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, just, and then you can either mail it or email it, scan the email back to me. That way I'll be Okay. I know you've got your number, but we probably should give it to Robin. Yes. I've got your number, I mean. Is that it? And my home. So you work during the day? Yeah. Oh. 802 472 361. Okay, and the um, list of the animals, yeah. do you want to stop by the office and pick them up? Where? Or not? Out back here? Nope, it's down the road about a mile. It's up where you know where Foster Hill Road is? Yeah. Next to the right road. across the road. Okay, right yeah. across the road. And we're open to take evening, 6 until 8. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, we snuck in as an amendment to the agenda um, to discuss the library trustee situation. I, I have to be honest, I just saw the title, read the subject of the email, but didn't open it yet. So. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, I'm here to inform you that on June 20th, uh, one of our trustees, Chris Codius, resigned. So it leaves one vacancy on our five-member board. And I'm here to request, as we've done in the past, that you designate the Board of Trustees to solicit applications for an appointment to the board. I think it's worked well in the past. Twice to my knowledge, we've been able to fill vacancies. So the, the process that we've done in the past is the the Library Board of Trustees puts out a public notice mm -hmm. requesting inquiries, mm -hmm. uh, letters of interest, resumes, and so forth, um, answer any questions that applicants might have, and then we refer them to the select board for an appointment. And that appointment is only good through the next election, which would be the town meeting. When you do those notices, you, does it cost anything? <laughs> no, we just do front porch forum. Yeah, we've had good success over the years um, putting them front porch forum, put a post on our library website, and then also on our Facebook page. And we ask um, Gary Clark to yeah, his Facebook page. Facebook yeah. page. And okay. that usually gives us pretty good coverage. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we've filled the vacancies we've had. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's 
there is a public notice that the select board is required to post. And I'm sorry that I should have notified you within 10 days. So I, I drafted public notice that I'd be happy to post them. And it, it says in the notice, I, I included it in the body of the email, but um, mm -hmm. due to a delay in notification by the chair of the Library Board of Trustees, that's me, uh, this notice is being published later than 10 days within creation of the vacancy. So, um, these notices are supposed to go out in the, in the event of a vacancy <laughs> on any um, public, public board or committee. Just to let the public know that there's a different means to fill the position, not only by appointment by the select board, but it could also be by a special election. Yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> and on a special town meeting to elect a library <laughs> trustee. <laughs> we need that kind of <laughs> Is that something for us to sign? This is this is nearly identical to the um, thank you to the other um, draft of the notice mm -hmm. that I made for the last week. So the only the only difference here is that the dates are updated and the um, explanation for the delay in posting. So those three are for the post office, the town office. You got it, yeah. No, okay. Okay. So no doodling. <laughs> no doodling on your copy. <laughs> and I'll call post service. But under the statute, it says it needs to be posted at the time of the clerk's office and two other public areas. Yep. Uh, so you went inside the post office and then out here from the last one. Takes care of that. Yep. And it doesn't have to be under the glass, though, does it? Well, that would look if we don't want it to. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody looks at it under the glass. I think it's amazing the right to be here. Yeah. Oh, wait. Now, post the library is yeah. acceptable. Mm -hmm. If there's no objection from the board, Mr. Fix had a comment I or a question. I have a question. Not being familiar with the town and not having access right now to the website. What's your name, please? Steve Murphy. Yeah. My apologies, I should have made that clear. No. And so we can see those questions down. We gave them back to Steve. Skip. Yes, it's important. Here's what I can post it on the website, too. That'd be great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Is there an end date to the search? No, what, what we've done in the past is um, usually leave it out two weeks. It would be, hopefully, we'll have some applicants by the time the next select board meeting, so that would be two weeks. Um, the intention being to fill the vacancy as soon as possible. So, is there contact information? Yes, yes, I will. Yeah, for a few weeks, I'll post it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to have it to you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. You're right here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. all right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to be my brief so I can um I'll put one for the library. Yeah, I have to make a copy of one and put it at the town office. Uh, I'll sit here and a post office. Okay. And I'll keep the Thank you all very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. And Brandy, welcome back, by the way. Yeah. You didn't have to do this with you. So the town treasurer's report is the next uh, item so on the agenda. Lots of goodies. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not the total abundance for FEMA. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. because we still had payroll in the highway mm -hmm. and the highway. Um, so we have borrowed against all of those. The line of credit, I'm not going to use or take all 500. I'm going to do just a little out of time until the tax money starts rolling in. And then, yeah. And however long it takes us to get FEMA money back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, we have an abundance that's for FEMA that's up and over the 300000 and we're still, we still have jobs that we're still fixing as far as that. Um, but yeah, I. I uh -huh. So this. I think we're looking at the last page. Uh, I think that's not that. Bad. So in here, it still, um, Alfie gives me invoices that are still going sure. to the FEMA, whether yep. it's Walmart's mm -hmm. material. Um, but so this two hundred and forty two thousand uh -huh. is what you've borrowed from these other accounts. No, that's what we've expended out of that FEMA. I have borrowed more from them. Okay. Then okay. so if, if you because what FEMA owes us is more than that. Right? Correct. Uh -huh. But I borrowed against the other funds. Uh -huh. okay. So I want that replenished. Mm. So that um, I'm not, yeah, if hypothetically the appraisal said mm -hmm. they came, they'd come tomorrow, I don't have that money to do mm. that. And mm -hmm. that's money that yeah, is in a fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I think it's pretty standard yeah. to have to uh, approve a line of credit, right? What? Yeah. The select board has to make a motion, and then yeah. um, I need to provide the minutes to the bank. Mm. Are we getting a fixed interest rate, or is it going to be fluctuating? What? The interest rate on the money. It, mm. We only accrue interest on what we actually use, correct? Yeah. Okay. What I borrowed, yeah. Yeah. Against the line of credit. And what are they asking for? Um, I think it's sad down for she's okay. with the end of this school year. Yeah. So I told her that she needed the minutes first. Oh, so once okay. I get approved, then I can kick it and show mm -hmm. it to you guys. This is the bare minimum. Yeah. I mean, she's not, they're not trying to make a ton of money off. I don't make much money. Um, as soon as I get the information, I can board it to you by mm -hmm. email so you guys okay. will know. And I won't <coughs> sign anything that you will. Diane's going to sign for the. So I, I guess I make a motion that we approve the line of credit limit of $500,000. Mm -hmm. Discussion? I know, Mr. Fix, you, you had a question or a yeah. comment, and as long as the yeah. board is okay with it. Point of clarification. When you talk about other funds, mm -hmm. these are not bank loans, these are town oh. funds. Correct. Right. 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 It wasn't, it became yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. I have 18 yep. different funds. Right. There's no further discussions, no further questions. All those in favor of approving the line of credit um, from Union Bank, correct? The Union Bank? Yes. Yeah. No, that's right. Uh, from mm -hmm. Union Bank, please say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes unanimously. And we can supply these minutes to the loan officer. Yes. Really? Uh, child care. Yeah, what's up with that? So it's mandatory and employers. The minimum that an employee can take over or get handed is 0.11. So the town can't take it all over and we can't take it all over as an employee. When you say take it over, you mean so, collect the money for it? From correct. The so it's 0.44 is the total. Randy, I'm lost. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. can you start me at yeah. the beginning? The Senate passed a law that everybody, employers and employees, have to pay this contribution okay. quarterly. Quarterly. The percentage breakdown is up to the select board, but the minimum that you can put on an employee is 0.11. The remainder, either the town well, the town has to eat it mm -hmm. to take on that expense. We didn't budget for it. 
It's not a huge amount of money, um, but it's, it's, it's there. So whether the town wants to take the whole 0.44, you're looking at $44 per thousand. Um, then have you come up with any rough estimate of how, how much, yeah, in a no. year? I have not. I know some towns are just paying the whole thing. Correct. Greensboro is paying the whole thing. I don't, that's the only one that I've talked about. So when you say forty-four thousand per or forty-four dollars per thousand dollars of uh, gross. income, of okay. this okay. is for employee income. So this is coming out. This would theoretically, at least a portion of this comes out of the paycheck, right? So yeah. this is a thousand dollars of earned money. Forty-four gross. needs to go to. So hypothetically, fifty thousand I make. Um, that would be the point. Well, whatever year. Want to do a 22 ratio either way yes there's a portion that comes out of my pocket and there's a portion that will come out of the town regardless every employee and employer has to pay this now it's mandatory okay. okay and the 1.11 is the least correct that an employee would have well, to the pay. most that the employee will have to pay. yeah sorry. okay sorry I, yeah, well, it's, I'm just trying to figure it's the that. least right we least we can charge <laughs> right yeah okay so um Point four four, or or point we can take point one one, or we can take less. We can't take more. We can't divide it up like point two two and point two no. two. No, it's the minimum. The minimum for an employee is point one one. Minimum maximum. So that's not forty six thousand. That's not forty something thousand. That's. So you okay? So you could ditch it on. You can split it in half. No, it can't. She said the point the point one one is the most you can charge the employee, right? It's the minimum, sorry. It's the minimum you can charge us. So <sighs> No, it's the max. I'm saying you're right. It's up to the point one earlier today no, is the max no. take out. Is the max. So the town has to pay at least the 0 .33. Correct. And the town could choose to pay the whole thing, or yeah, no? Right. Yes. Okay. And so, what's the difference between what we're asking? We would be asking them to, you know, how much? If we just took out the whole thing. Yep. Is it versus the? If we took out 0 .4 versus 0 .3, do we know how roughly how much? I didn't any, that. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. Is this a decision that we need to make? I mean, I'm inclined to do the you whole thing. You have to. I can't do payroll without this decision. So you need to know immediately. Well, you need to know. Yeah. This is implemented July. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. And then what I'm interrupting but this is 0. 0.44 percent, right? Right. It's right. less than half of one percent. So one percent of a thousand is ten dollars. 0.44 is less than ten dollars. In our system, we put it in, well, Nimrick automatically put it into the system as the employee pays the 11 and then the town takes the cushion of the remainder <coughs> just to set it up in the system. Um, and the way they based it off was $1,000 is $44. Mm -hmm. Out of $1,000 is $44. Hmm. So that doesn't come up with 100 percent. So who pays the other? It's the maximum is 0.44. Oh. So divvying it up, whether it be 11 on the employee and then 33 on the town, it equals to 44. Okay. And then who makes up the difference? I didn't ask. I don't care about that. Is it the Senate? The Senate. It's 44. The rest of us taxpayers, I guess. And does this go to a common pool? I mean, like if you have employers that don't have any child care, do you have? It doesn't matter. Every mm -hmm. person in okay, the state Okay, so this is going to some. Even if you don't have any, I have to yeah. pay it with my quarterly that I owe okay. to the state. Yeah. Quarterly. So it's basically mm -hmm. so this is state. not, there's no loopholes. You, like, some people don't get it. Everybody's getting paid who's an employee. Okay, so it's a state. Even if you're so. uh, your own vendor, <laughs> your business is, you have to pay it. So ten percent. So you're talking like one tenth of one percent is what we're talking about. Whether or not 
we want the town taxpayers to pay it or the employees to pay it. So if I move my decimal points like this, I think it's like, if somebody makes $74,000, that would be $74. Am I right? No. You guys got get Skip's got his calculator out. So you, yeah, I, I just did a calculation. You can make 50 grand a year, it's come up as $2,200. No, that can't be right. No, that's not right. Well, point one one is a, a 10, basically. No, no, that's right. Are you doing just that percentage or are you wanting a whole percentage? That's no, it's total. Point four four. Point so, Bernie, Yeah. If I can it's not 11%. This is 0. 0.44 is 0.044. It's yes. 0. 0.0044. Oh, well, that's not. It's not 20. Yeah. In our system, in the NIMRAC, it's just 0. 0.44. But yes, in the, in the equation of doing the math, it's 0. 0.0044. Wait, 0. 0.044. Yes. When you're, if, you're, if you're just finding it on your. Okay, not 0.0044. No, I know it's 0.0044. 0.044. Two zero no, 0.04 is 4%. 0.004 is 0.04. Zero zero is 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. So that doesn't give you $44 per thousand, though. Other towns are $1,000 a year. Okay, that one. The employer may require some or all to contribute up to 25%, 0.11% of the contribution through a taxable yeah, deduction. Where did you see that? Of the total contribution. Right I sent it to you guys on the emails for the webinar that was as well in the past. Oh, I missed that one. The child care code is too Wait for four percent. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's four dollars and forty cents per thousand, though. Not forty-four dollars per thousand. For them to correct. Yeah. Mm. I I'm, I'm in favor of the board paying. Sure. It seems like a pretty small amount. Mm -hmm. And you need we need to make a motion to okay. that, that effect. Is that true? That that sounded like a motion. But I'll make a motion that we we pay the entire 0.44 percent. 0.044 percent. 0.0044. Well, for, for points, yeah, 0.0044 or point, yeah, four tenths of one percent. Oh my God! Any further discussion? Hi, funny. <laughs> no further discussion. Any questions? Mike? Percent of what? Out of their income. Out of their income. All payroll? All payroll. All payroll? Okay. Yep, all of payroll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Including part time employees? Yep. Everybody gets hit with it. <laughs> I'd like to ask what it goes to, but I'll save that question for another day. Yeah, independent. Great. They're going to get hit with that as well. Yeah. Everybody. You have no business. But this is this is all for child care. Yeah. The child care back. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The cost of Senate back in the fall yep. last year. Mm -hmm. But it's now active as of July 1. So nobody got paid today and they, um, until this motion was made. And now okay. I'll have to create an account, a liability account, which I did, mm. but if it's on the town, then that's easy if there's no breakdown, that going to every employee. Well, there's a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. um, so Woodbury is picking up the full requirement for that. Point zero zero four four. Michael, I'm sure you've got that all figured out. Well, I can't wait to figure it out. Yes. He's our scribe. He does the draft of the minutes. <laughs> so if I can get that 
back from you, Diane. Oh. Just because I have a mortgage in the system that I And Brandy, did you have anything else? I do. Okay. So for over the last two weeks, cash receipts taking in four thousand twenty nine dollars and seventy cents. Each of you should have yeah, I gave each of you one of the uh, breaking down to recording, dog licenses, vault, fees, name postings, etc. Delinquency I took in $3,775.96. The state of Vermont did electronic deposit for the property tax assessment, um, which was $16,827, which goes toward the current tax revenue. Uh, payroll over the last 12, uh, two weeks, $12,026. Accounts payable, $106,710.18. Um, I have transferred $100,000 um, over the last two weeks, and today I kicked back $24,000 back over into the money after. Mm. So we're not broke yet, hmm? A little close for me, <laughs> um, especially for the funds that I think it's a new year and yeah, I can spend it all. Yeah, I need to get that line of credit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Great, thank you. Is that it? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to get together and do some. Talking about the budget and the uh, tax rate pretty soon, right? As soon as um, the listers give me the heads up that we're done. Right, but we can work on it before then. We don't have to wait till the last minute. Correct. They should be done this week, but, uh, but yep, still. Yeah, the education we've already received. Mm -hmm. The numbers from that. And that is going to be what? Higher than last year. Yeah. For Homestead, 20 cents is going to be about 12%. Non Homestead, 16%. So we have about 26 cents. And hopefully our municipal. our municipal will, I don't know, we'll see mm -hmm. <laughs> if we can make up some of that. So that'll be another meeting that we need to yeah, schedule? I think so, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Brandy. Mm -hmm. Rob? I received a phone call from a woman up in West Woodbury, and I sent you all an email concerning her about the... I want to make sure I'm politically correct. <laughs> about the man up there that has criminal warrants against him that's trying to lure young children into his vehicle. Mm -hmm. So this was, that, that was the content of, or the, the gist of the phone call mm -hmm. that you received, yeah. Yes. I, I, okay. I would talk about allegations. What? Yeah. yeah. I would talk about allegations if I was being very yeah. careful. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So we're not naming names. Want me to follow up on that, Robin? Sure. Okay, so I made a whole bunch of phone calls to follow up on that. Um, I talked to four different moms in West Woodbury, um, and I also spoke with the Hardwick PD. And so what I was able to, there's also, um, a Facebook post circulating that is kind of like warning people about this. Um, I'm going to speak really slowly just to make sure I say this correctly. Um, so these are the things that I have found that I feel like I can say with certainty so that I'm not spreading rumors about things that maybe are not certain. Um, so this person does have a very extensive criminal history. There are warrants out for him in Massachusetts, but they're not extraditable warrants, so our police officers can't just like send him back to Massachusetts. Um, there are two official allegations of him approaching young girls inappropriately. 
not necessarily illegally. Um, I don't believe those two instances he necessarily tried to lure them anywhere, but he did speak to them in a way that a grown-up shouldn't be talking to an adolescent girl. Mm. There was an other, I guess at this point, unsubstantiated rumor, which may or may not be true, but it wasn't reported to the police, that there was a child in Hardwick, an adolescent boy, that he offered drugs and tried to lure into the woods. But I don't think we can say that that's, um, it's, it's a rumor at this point. Somebody told you that it happened to their child or something? Several people told me that it happened to a child. Oh. But when I spoke with Hardwick PD about it, he said mm. the other two incidents has been reported, but that one, the parents of the kid didn't report. So, so we can't really. We can't really like speak on it. Um, what else did I find out? Um, I asked the officer I spoke with just kind of what his thoughts were for the safety of the kids in our community, um, whether parents need to be on high alert, whether we need to be not allowing our kids to walk down the road. And he is kind of off the cuff, so he was, you know, answering my question, maybe not for the record, but he said that he didn't want to say that parents shouldn't let their kids go anywhere because it's summer and, you know, uh, we don't want to work every summer, but he did say that it would be good for people to be aware of this and to speak with their kids about how to handle it if a stranger approaches them um, and just to kind of be like a little more aware. Um, so that's all I've got on that. Next. We still have 13 unlicensed dogs from 2023. <laughs> Hmm. And um, Pam is getting ready to send out the second notice for them to get licensed. Mm -hmm. So we have that. And we are, Pam and I are going to help the cemetery commission go through the cemetery deeds that we have at the office mm -hmm. and update their cemetery plot surveys oh. so they know who is going to be buried where or who is buried where. Hmm. And I, you know, there's not only the, there's the book that has the actual deeds in it, the loose leaf binder, but there's also a couple of file folders in the file the cabinet. The folders are the ones that are fat, so the, final, the book must be on the... Yeah, it's a green place. binder, it's, it's down below the, uh, the uh, vital records section. Okay. That's where the actual deeds should, okay. should be. Okay. And last week I did order two more land record recording books, ah. which is going to bring me back to my vault is getting too small. I only have one more space for a recording book. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. How Blasting quickly? Blasting maybe? No. <laughs> How quickly do you think that book will fill up? Like, how soon would you need to start using the extra space, do you think? Well, it depends on how fast mm -hmm. the it sells. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be six months, it could be two years. Mm -hmm. It's hard to Okay. And does that stuff have to be kept, like, under lock and key? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Diana, you had mentioned that there's some things in there that yeah, maybe I, could be moved out. Yeah, I would, we would uh, be willing to take a look. I'm thinking that, um, well, I haven't really taken a look yet, but that uh, maybe the top two rows on that first um, row uh, could be put somewhere else because nobody ever looks at those. And then you just have to move everything. You would want to do it every year, but if you do it too, Two rows at a time. That's four books. Yeah. And uh, that would give you enough room for a few more years. <laughs> so short of that, though, what what are, what's the solution for something like that? Hmm? What's the solution for something? A bigger vault. A bigger vault. Bigger yeah. vault. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm blasting. Could there be like a fire safe, like a locker? Yeah, you still have to keep the hard copy. Well, somewhere. Somewhere. I think you Right, if they're digital, then... Mm. Could, like, the downstairs area, um, the back room that isn't getting used, I know it's a possible flood area, but... We got water in this past weekend. 
A little bit, right? Or a lot. <laughs> no, you can tell the floor where it's, where it's all wet, where it came Yeah. Be. Oh, so again, good. after last meeting, when we got water in. Yeah. Okay. But I think once that's all finished off and Robin has ordered a whole bunch of nice new shelves, there is some stuff in the vault that can, that doesn't have to be in the vault. Okay. I guess I was wondering if there was like a lockable, fireproof safe down in the lower area that was elevated to keep it, you know, out of danger of flooding. Do you think yeah, that would be, be sufficient yeah. or no? The so, worst part is my stuff, speaking of my stuff, uh -huh. um, for audit capability, um, I have to retain mine and they need to be in the safe. Uh, Unless they were digital, but yeah, that's not. Mm -hmm. But well, you do have that fault locking fireproof file cabinet now. Does that contribute to? Select board orders. That's all it is, which is select board orders, which don't even have to be under lock. The select paper will fit in there because of the fireproof all the way around it. What, what did, would it take to digitize? I mean, I know it would be a lot of work. That's but it would be a, We would need to fund it. $50,000 probably at least. 50000 Oh, it's more than that. It would be more than that. It depends how far you want to go back. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, once you digitize it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming in to touch the originals. Nobody, no pages are going to be missing. No, yeah. So is that mm -hmm. worth the discussion for when we start budget season or no? It sounds like a lot of money to me. I, I realize it would be a really nice thing, but at the same time, just thinking, of the cost um, yeah, right versus right. like yeah. trying to find some more space. And uh, uh, the people who do the title searches, they're you know, I mean, okay, during COVID, it would be they would have loved it if they could stay in their office and just look at things mm -hmm. online. But uh, some of them just prefer to come in because they could miss things if they're looking mm -hmm. online. But we do have people that come in and complain. Why isn't this digitized? Yeah, so that's kind of tough for them. <laughs> Yeah. Can I ask another question? If, if we not, didn't digitize all of the past records, but started digitizing what we have now, that couldn't cost fifty thousand dollars to do that, right? But then we wouldn't need to store any of the, like, from yeah, this point forward, we wouldn't need to store any of the physical documents. I think we still have to keep them. We still keep. But we don't need to. Keep, yeah. It sounds like we don't need to keep them. Oh. At the town hall, or at well, the, the, just the office. we would have to keep all the papers that we have now. It's just that going forward, we wouldn't need as much bulk, right? Oh yes, yeah. Didn't you for say sure. we don't have to keep up? We have to keep all those books that are there now. Yes, because they're not. Yeah, digitized. yeah. If we didn't, so, I mean, he said if it was digitized. Oh, if they, we did like they're 40 years. Still have to be there. Yeah. So we digitize it and solve the space issue, issue, or would it not solve that? that? No. Okay. Digitizing does not solve. It's more convenient for whoever wants to do the research. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not going to save anybody any money. Would it be a lot easier on me to open up this typewriter? Someday my old selector is going to give out. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> so then it sounds like we need to try to budget for a new vault. No, we don't, there's no room for a new vault. I'll have to go to a new building. <laughs> well, at some point we're going to run out of space, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, like I said. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I well, guess we'll table mm -hmm. this for another, when we have like... Oh, by the way, I don't know if you heard that veil guy. Yes, I was going to say that. He was the one that did the design for the existing vault. If oh, you look at the old records, he was on the select board with and they did the existing vault. Before that, we just had two huge old metal safes. Does the, you already asked this, but I didn't hear the answer. Does the vault have to be on site? Like, could some of the way older stuff be in a separate vault elsewhere? Mm. I think that's the liability of it. You would have to have a town employee with it mm. because that vault would have to be locked. Yeah. You wouldn't give the combination out to just anybody. Mm. Right. Okay, I guess I was just thinking of like this building, or just thinking of places and, stuff could go. And I guess, I, you know, just to maybe suggest possible solutions, like if going forward we digitized everything and that all got stored off-site but in a vault 
safely. The public would still have access to those digitized copies, but the, and we would be maintaining any future documents. Because mm -hmm. it's not like, it's not like the, we're, even if you find two rows of space on some top shelf in the left-hand corner, like, eventually you're going to run out of that, too. Yeah, well, that's so, going to take you for another four or five years. Yeah, yeah. Maybe by that time they'll decide to do digitization. But then when are you going to, where are you going to put those books that you're taking off that top shelf? They still have to be in that wall. No, that's what I mean. There, there is other stuff. For example, poll records. Used to be poll taxes. There are a whole bunch of black books up there. I don't know if we have to keep those in the vault or if we have to I keep them any more. Ones? What? Are they handwritten ones? Some of them are. Some of them Why are not. Why don't you want to save that? What? Why don't you want to save that? Well, I don't know if you know the ones I mean, but they're not handwritten. I mean, my name is in there, so. <laughs> but, um. It's not whether you want to, but whether you need to, I guess when it comes down to vault space. We do have that extensive policy that we came up with as far as what had to be kept, right? And when it could be discarded. Yes, you have to walk me through that. I can't make heads or tails on your list. <laughs> Brandy, we worked really hard on that. <laughs> but those um, whole ones that you were talking about, is that something that we could turn over to the historical society? That's, well. If yeah. they have a, if they have a good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. All of it's history of the library. Mm -hmm. right. Some of that stuff it's could go in the basement. Some of that stuff could go in the basement if it's not stuff that has to be in the vault. Well, but anyway, I think in the yeah, interest of time, Mr. Fix, real quick, if you, yeah, you got a quick suggestion. We deal with this at the Gazette, and the state does have an archivist, and the state takes the Gazette records. The mm -hmm. state has a storage. The state has everything. I would think. If I were in your shoes, I would appoint a subcommittee to look into what the real options are because I think I'm hearing things that aren't looking at all of your options. Mm -hmm. We do also have uh, our records on microfilm, is it? Yeah. We have one. Huh? Co-file. No, not co-file, but the other, the people that used to come in and take two or three books at a time and they put them on um, microfilm and they send us, and they keep a copy and they send one copy for the state archives. They store one copy for us and they bill us like a few dollars a year. Do I need to digitize a microfilm that used to take that book and Yeah. They actually sent us, one time they sent us a, a a flash drive with a whole lot of uh, records on it and what they wanted was a lot of money so I sent it back <laughs> that was a few years ago but they could probably still do that yeah. okay. well in the interest of time maybe we should move on to um, Alfie's road report So last evening I was asked to get a hold of the main card and then she went for a I reached out to him and he's, he's saying that we can schedule it sometime in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So nothing definitely nothing nails down yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walk on their down. So they're they're uh, flexible. They are flexible. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So the ball is sort of in Nate's court as far as what the schedule will allow. Mm -hmm. And of course he wants to be there when we do it mm -hmm. to collect the information. Okay. So that's where we are there. Right. Uh, my school period is now done. I upgraded those two colors that I How'd they do after that last? How'd they do after this last rain this week? Uh, I'm not there today. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have any calls either. So yeah. I'm Good. They're okay. Uh, we did get the, the large squash culvert came in in time mm -hmm. to put it in with the big escalator mm -hmm. before that went back. So that's gone. It's out of there now. Uh, and pretty much just fix some wash spots with the graders here and there and hopefully 
hopefully soon we'll be able to start on some summer projects. I have a question. This is kind of a question for Skip, but at last time, didn't we talk about whether or not that, that West Woodbury or the Cape Brook Road, you might be able to sneak that in with some of the other FEMA, some other FEMA project? It's true. And? Well, we have a conference call on Wednesday, and that's part of the agenda. Okay. Along with the mitigation projects. And even the latest one, which is uh, the uh, rail trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw pictures of a culvert that has to be reset. Mm. So I'm going to send those pictures to the FEMA folks and say, hey, we have to reset this and we want to have the cost uh, reimbursed to us <coughs> as a mitigation project. Because in essence it is, because you're going to drop in another few feet or something like that. Mm. So it doesn't wash out. Yeah. Well, I, I think what it needs is a header. Uh, water ended up going underneath the collar and mm. sort of bubbled up in the middle mm. and kind of washed it out. Uh, the collar's still in place, but there was so much, so little room with only a 20 foot collar. Mm. Uh, we couldn't really harden the upstream side, so I think a header would do a lot there. What's a, what's a header? Which is just a it's a, like a concrete collar that will go around the whole collar. Yep. And you put the concrete so it's a couple feet below the the, brook, the stream mm -hmm. level. And then it's not under scouring and, and working its way under the collar. So this is not one of the culverts that was replaced During feet earlier. Right? It, it is. It is. It's a brand new collar we just put in oh. during the flood last year. So you think a larger one is needed, or do you think this head well would take care of it? Well, in the rush of things, we weren't, there was no way to get a hydraulic study to oh. determine the, the size of the culvert. So I doubled the size no. uh, that was in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what happened is debris came down and plugged the four foot culvert. Mm -hmm. And it's four foot diameter. Wow. So that's a lot. Yeah. Of, Hmm. How you can remedy that? I mean, it's, it's twice the size of color that was there. Hmm. Um, it just undermined it. You know, the water ate mm -hmm. underneath it, and and plus with the debris plugging it, half plugging it, and making mm -hmm. water back up, and then sort of came over the road. So. so, but it's not on a stream, right? So you don't need the V trans H and H. Thing? Is that right, or is it? Well, well it's it is, not on a road, so it probably doesn't need B trans approval, anyway. So, um, yeah, unless Viva wants it's still, it. Is it a right away? It's still a right away. Public right away. So I think that would call for, and also, especially the FEMA money. They the might want FEMA that. Money going into it, yeah. Would probably require at this point. Oh. Uh, H and H. Hmm. So yeah. that just slows everything up. Yeah, course. really. But um, I mean, I can go and fill in the hole. Like I said, the call is still in place. I can go and fill it and make it passable. But mm. clearly, it's not a permanent fix. Would you put the header in without an H and H study, or is that not? Does that not make sense? Um, well, that comes to. to FEMA. If mm -hmm. FEMA's going to put money into it, they may want the H&H mm -hmm. to determine if that collar that we've got is big enough mm -hmm. before they put more, more money into it. But they didn't need the H&H the first time, right? We just fixed it. Yeah, I know. Because it was in yeah. such a rush during the flood, we just put a collar yeah. in there. They did it yeah. uh, and we, we did a lot of work that we didn't do H&H studies for, mm. just because mm -hmm. of the didn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but now it's sort of after the fact, after the rush, they may expect us to do an HH study. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think that Diana's or your response to Diana's question whether or not the stream runs all the time. I believe it is an annual stream. Mm -hmm. It runs.
happens all the time. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It happens all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. And you think, so if they did the H&H, &H, if they came out and did that study, you think they would re recommend maybe a head wall instead of replacing it? Or do they make recommendations? I mean, they did on this. hard to say, depending yeah. on what they, <laughs> yeah. what they see for a, a large storage area. Above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's how they determine what size of call to put in. Mm. Most likely they would say a box collar or something else. Ooh. I mean, it's, it's, the storms are just amazing. Mm -hmm. they, you know, the water is just dropping out of the sky. Mm. And I can't mm. it all mm. and, you know, and then if you mm. get a little bit of debris that plugs the collar, mm -hmm. now you've still got the same amount of water in here. Well, it's <sighs> or, or Sounds like we might have another event Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. 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 So if we don't have that H and H study, if it's not required, will that collar that collar thing will that be considered a permanent fix? Um, I would feel much more confident. He said there was a chance you could put a collar on there and it was fix it. Right. And I'm just wondering if that would be considered a permanent fix. Well, I sort of thought the four foot collar was a permanent fix. <laughs> <laughs> it was a double in size, but uh, I don't know that we have any permanent fixes anymore. Yep. I mean, I mean, look at the state out here. They're, yep. they're collar, they, they put it in, they put a lot of money into it, and it's not big enough. Right. So, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know if we have such a thing as a permanent fix, but uh, the collar on there would certainly stop the water from eroding and yep. undermining and carrying the collar. Mm -hmm. There's uh, much more water that storm, we wouldn't have that collar there. It would have mm. washed out. Well. Because it washed, like underneath the collar, it washed halfway across the trail. Mm. So, much more water in the whole thing would have just. Hmm. Can you wait until next week put rocks on it? <laughs> 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 What's your uh, ulterior sure. motive there? <laughs> <laughs> but we're supposed to get some real good rain on St. Thursday this week. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. yeah. oh, no. Well, I'm just, you know, it's, it's sort of the town's responsibility to keep that open. And so that's sort of our pressure. And, some mm. residents in the area has brought to our attention, so mm -hmm. maybe what we should do is something. It's not a permanent. Is it a danger right now to people who might be riding the trail and not yes. know that it's there? So that's well, part it's, of the it's, it's, trail. That's part of the, the four wheeler club trail. Yeah, it's it's way it's, it's marked. Okay. I mean it's some people have got some sticks in it, there's a couple of reflective posts that you know. Uh, so it is marked. Okay. But should people know not to go on that trail at all? I mean, you they're going to just it. turn around? Can, you no, think they, they can? They can get around with it. I think so. Access for their trails, correct? What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's still accessible. Oh, they could still, oh, okay. Oh. It looked to me like it was. Until you get to this washout, I wouldn't take a truck over this washout. That's what I mean. Yeah. But you, could you get a four-wheeler around it? You can just about get a four-wheeler. Just about. But it's undermined underneath. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. so, that's not so which which is where the liability is. Mm -hmm. yeah. If a four wheeler or a or side by side, which is a little heavier, breaks that bridge that's mm -hmm. bridge gravel that's mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. you go into it, now the town could be held out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So was it your intention to kind of get to that sooner than later? Uh, I was waiting for this discussion, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can get to it fairly quickly. Or I can put real close in that, in that, or trail close or whatever. I mean, is there, any, is there any reason for them to like get on at Buck Lake Road and go north if they're going to just have to turn around? Wouldn't they want to know that they should go another way? <laughs> Seems to uh, be like well, that. Well, that would be the idea of closing the road. Right, yeah. Because then they don't, they don't have more distance to be on. Mm. They do go on, and then they're at their own risk. Mm. Mm.
you know, and maybe, and maybe we should do that regardless mm. until we do get it fixed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's makes it's sense. Or For sure. Or yeah. Just put the signs up so that we're protected from liability. Yeah. I think so. So a, a four foot, what's next after a four foot culvert? A six foot? Two foot. Eight foot? Uh, well, you can get them, you can get them bigger. Really? But, but then you have to be able to dig down enough to. You still are right. Wow. Wow. They make them like squash pipes, so it's yeah. wider and, yeah. and mm. not as high. Mm -hmm. But oh. that's money. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, there's, oh. there's, there's going to be some money involved in no matter what we do there. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I can do, I can certainly fill the road back and make it, make it safe. Mm hmm And I can try to pack some saw or something down on the inlet of the collar to stop it from going underneath the collar. Hmm. Which, again, is sort of a temporary fix. Hmm. You could uh, make a sign that says maybe make basically unsafe for vehicles more than four foot wide or something. So if people wanted to ride a bike or something, they or walk on it. They still could. Yeah. No. Okay. No. All right. It is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. My suggestion would be to close the road. Yeah. As soon as tomorrow morning. Makes sense to me yeah. as well. And then I guess I would leave it up to you. You know more than the board, but yeah, how, to, I mean, how I can, to repair it. I can put a, I can get it passable again with a couple loads of gravel and a little bit of excavator time. But in the meantime, you can put up a closed sign. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, closed sign. I can and do you that. can send Vanessa out to take a picture. I can. I, I know it's not my place. <laughs> but I'm going to speak yes. up anyway. <laughs> At the last part of the electric department board meeting, our interim AGD, or the interim AGD um, manager, is Scott Johnson, who's yeah. running Morrisville. Yeah. He was at a conference where there's apparently funding, and Michael may want to know about this, and he doesn't, for future, uh, for any water event yeah. that doesn't have to be done in Europe for that. Because this sounds like something going forward that, you know, planning for the future. Mm. That's mm. that flood resilient. Oh, the one you've been talking yeah. about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the recommendation there is that everybody in town write down everything that possibly could happen related to water, and the feds in the state will come to your town, go through them one by one, and oh. tell you where to go to submit Oh my goodness. I mean, they're offering an incredible amount of support. Mm. Is that the one where they're also offering to find the contractors? And I don't know. Okay. It's the resilience. Michael, you had a question or a comment? Yeah, I would suggest that the road just be closed for now. Um, mm. Just because, you know, there are a lot of roads in town right now that are in really sad shape from mm -hmm. the heavy rain that we have got. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address those mm -hmm. properly, we're going to be in. We're shape on Friday morning. So they need, need to take priority as opposed to I would a suggest that, yeah. recreational there, trail. There are yeah. roads that are, especially the hills that are pretty well mm -hmm. uh, eroded at this mm -hmm. moment. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the rail trail is fine, but that's not a it's not a public. Not road. a priority, really. Right. It's a... yeah. So just for liability, maybe we would just close the road and. You know, have the work group get to it when they can. But this is my suggestion. That makes sense to me. 
And we just, we just talk about closing that section, right? Like if people want to try the rest of the railroad trail, they could theoretically. No, that was, that was what I asked. Well, why would they even get on? To, to the trail if, if they can't go all the way through. Well, because the they might want to go part way through. What? They might want to go part way through. Well. <laughs> I, I can probably, the best thing would be to put four signs. Okay. Two, two right close to the to the site that's damaged. And two at the cross. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes one sense. One at Town Line, kind of hard looking at the river line, and one at yeah, I think that makes sense. Then we're covered. If, mm -hmm. if somebody goes past our sign at that point, mm -hmm. they're on their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and people will. I mean, they do uh -huh. it all the time. I'm putting the collar at the side of the road, you know, on these larger mm -hmm. roads, and they still come try to come through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at least the liability is off of us. Should we suggest that Hardwick put one on their side, too? Kevin? No. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the last time it flooded, I put it, I put a road calls right in the harbor. Pond, yeah. You know, where, where it goes into, yeah. Uh, if we can leave that up to harbor. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not, we're not going to have a problem with it. I'm, I'm guessing I can talk to... No, but they could do it. Well, they could do their end. Mm -hmm. Or you could do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll close it. I'll close it. Okay. Uh, All right. And then I agree with my colleague, we still have some washouts uh, mm -hmm. on some of the hills, so it would be nice to put that mm -hmm. as a priority for this week and then maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. figure out out there. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robin's question. Yeah, do we ever get any reimbursement from the Snowmobile Club for the first time that washed out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up to remind them that yeah. they had pledged that, um, but at the time we were waiting to hear like exactly what we were going to be reimbursed from FEMA, and so we had talked about just kind of reminding them, but saying that we're not sure. You know, like if FEMA covers most of it, which they're going to do, we don't necessarily need them to pay us for something that FEMA. So the answer is no. So no, we were not reimbursed, but they did, they were. But we could still, if we had a reason to dun them for some more, I think they should mm -hmm. contribute. They, they remembered that they were gonna. What? They remembered that, yeah, you know, okay. that they were gonna put money in. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Alfie? Um, just a, a question and more for your information. I'm sorry? I'm getting a lot of requests for gravel on hospital roads. Really? So they can kind of repair it themselves. I know it's been happening in the past. Mm -hmm. huh. um, and you have a line item. For, yeah, thank you. Uh, for that hospital roads. I just want to make sure that the one, the select board knows about it, and the two, the select board is okay with it. You're not talking camp roads, right? Right. Yeah, class four. Class four. Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of times we do get requests for people on camp roads that would like right. some. Right. Right. No, no, these are these are legitimate class four. Mm -hmm. um, and it's our responsibility to maintain. But you said something about there was mm. no bridges and culverts, but I mean, there's a lot of class four roads that are completely. I mean, I get through them, but I don't know if you. I don't think you could. Compare. These are roads that people are using. And bridges. But also to keep them. Oh, and erosion. Oh, okay. And erosion. And erosion. So there you go. There's our clarification. I mean, it seems like a benefit if we're getting free labor. Like, the cost of the, is gravel crazy expensive? Um, Define yeah. crazy expensive. I don't know. <laughs> it's sure it's, not. it's in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything is expensive. Uh huh. But I agree. If they're willing to do it, with their time, we don't have to only just dump it in a pot for them. Uh -huh. I think it is a benefit to the town because it's 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 a class four row. It's it's an asset to the town. Mm -hmm. So if we can keep that up, I think it's a great idea. 
And if they, yeah. as long as you know who it is and where the gravel is going to go and who's going to do the work, because we have gotten in messes before with somebody going ahead and doing their own work on Class 4 Road, and right. that's why we ended up with Old Quarry Road, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> FEMA's taking care of that. <laughs> no, this is a, an older situation yeah, well, yeah. that you are well aware of, but you won't <laughs> stay in the public. <laughs> 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 uh, so, yeah, I mean, the people that have been contacting me, I, I know that they live on a class four. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the locations where I dump it is where it's been dumped in the past. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you guys to know and make sure that you didn't have issues with it. It's not a lot of gravel okay. compared to what we spend in, in a <laughs> year. Gravel, yeah. You know, it's like one or two loads here, mm -hmm. here and there. It's not, it's not really a lot. Thanks for letting us know. Do you ever think of uh, whether one of your operators might want to work a few hours of overtime? and? run around with the grader on a Friday or something like that? Because it doesn't yeah. seem like things are not getting fixed up from the last storm. Well, the last storm was Sunday. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> the Friday one before. was not helpful. <laughs> uh, but we were out there this morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how I can get there any faster. I can't grade washouts oh, I know. while yeah. it's raining. No. Yeah. Um, but if there's a need for overtime, my guys are there for us. That's okay, good. good. That's Absolutely. good. Yeah. You know that they were good for that, right? Mm -hmm. They need to spend what they need to spend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. As we're looking now, this winter, you just carry the chainsaw in your car because <laughs> the trees, especially that road, the white birches oh, yeah. are. are it's going to be, mm -hmm. yeah, my, my chainsaw is going to stay in my car because it's, it's going to be one of those, we get a heavy, wet storm, all those white birches are just mm -hmm. going to be blocking the road. Yeah. But at the point That's, we're not ready to be cut yet. That's another whole conversation <laughs> that we shall have. Mm. Uh, we have, speaking of that, we have started mowing roadside mowing. Okay, yeah. When we have time to mm -hmm. wash out. Mm -hmm. um, but there's only three of us, and it's been a busy summer already. Mm -hmm. Nothing like last summer, mind you, but uh, the summer is busy. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're still catching up from last summer. Right. right. Well, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No oh, questions. Thanks, Alfred. Yeah. Skip wrote the recovery officer's report. Mm -hmm. South of a meeting Wednesday? Or, mm -hmm. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah. 
projects are. And so our projects, as of April 22nd, 2024, were in at least three of FEMA scoping projects, which that means some of them are now at this consolidated resource center in Puerto Rico. So, you know, I sent numerous emails to our friends at FEMA, and then this is the spend plan guidance. And this is what the FEMA program delivery manager is talking And someone asked them, when are our projects going to become obligated? So they go through this, and this is pretty much this flow chart for them, you know, more of a, 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 a Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So in essence, all of our projects were in FEMA's hands December of 2023. So that's the third, third row down. It was all in December of 2023. Now, phase three, <coughs> pending consolidated resource center project development. There are still, <coughs> excuse me, only four projects there. And that's been only four projects there since April of this year. Those are the rail trail, quarry, and Blake Hill Road, Catter Road, and East Hill Road. The rest of our 10 projects are just in this continuous spin at FEMA. Okay. There is one other pending insurance completion and then pending insurance period. There's a couple more rows down, and that's the town office. So, FEMA has all that information, and you know it's just it's just really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And so again, Danielle and I have done all our work. <clears throat> we're just relying on FEMA. So just as a, an aside, we have one project, Old Quarry Road in Bay Hill. Mm -hmm. That was the first one to go to the <clears throat> Consolidated Resource Center in mm -hmm. this year. And I just looked at it today. And then there's a little history tab on the FEMA grants portal. And there are 124 discrete entries into this project. So in other words, one person in FEMA has touched this 124 times. Whoa. It could be the same person, or it could be different people. Hmm. But someone has been in this you know, really straightforward project of just fixing the road 124 times. It's just stunning. How much bureaucracy is there? Was it uh, Vermont Digger that did a story a couple days ago about how much, what percentage of the FEMA money is going back to them for administration? It's, yeah, Mike was sent that way. Yeah. It was DPR. It was DPR. No. And, uh, I believe it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. You know, they, uh, it's, it's just uh, so. Mm. Right now, there's a Zoom conference, video conference set up for this Wednesday at 9 a.m. Anyone is, if they want to sign on, <coughs> just to mm -hmm. you know, and we'll, we can talk. So, right now, the NRPs are Andy Flag, who's the State of Vermont Emergency Management. He's our liaison between the state and FEMA. We have the FEMA program delivery manager, and we are the mitigation officer because we have three sites and perhaps more sites now that might qualify for mitigation funding. Mm. And we have a gentleman from Louisiana who is the tabletop science. And I can talk to you about that tabletop <laughs> site inspection, which was a service. So our agenda includes zero obligated project. And again, an obligated project is when the CRC, Consumer, uh, Consolidated Resource Center, gets through looking at all our stuff and said, what we did is correct in terms of it. They agree that the labor was not excessive. They agree that the materials were spot on in terms of how big the damage was. And any retro equipment we use, you know, fit the bill. So, no obligated project. So I'm going to ask why. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've done everything. They're there. We signed all the project completion certification. And 
exactly the things that we certified. All the projects that are complete, yes, are complete. And <coughs> that, and again, Old Quarry Road, which is project 739498, <coughs> has been up to CRC since April 15th, <laughs> which to me is just stunning. You know? And I'm going to ask him about this spend plan project guidance. Processes to remark correctly. A month at a time, yes. Yeah. Mm. So, anyhow, second item on the agenda is a tabletop site inspection report. So, a couple of weeks ago, we had a tabletop site inspection. And there was no Zoom, so it was just like a teleconference with no video. Oh. site inspection is just that, you know, take the information, what was the image, how much does it cost, do you have any insurance, any mitigation What the, the tabletop site inspection team is realized that the site inspection had already been completed for Town Highway 23 and 24. Somehow that got lost in the discussion that Lenny Hamlet and Alfie went out and took a look at these last September. redoing things that were done last year. $337. 
would bear a share of that would be seven thousand five hundred and twenty seven. And that's before the two bridges and the That's before you've got Town Highway twenty three and twenty four mitigation work begins, but that's a whole different process with the RFPs and drilling mm -hmm. things like that. So I'll write for an extension on those two projects because the work will be completed this year. And there's a county road extension included in this? But that's not totally yeah, done, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You're waiting for the H and H or right for one hall we're waiting yeah. on H and H. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you know, it's status quo. You know, I just you know, get the board every couple of days to see if there are any monies obligated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I'm hoping it was the people assembled on Wednesday that we could get some forward movement. Because uh, we've, done, we've done it all. You know, I'm sure there are other towns that are feeling the same frustration. But Fina has everything. Mm. You know, there are uh, just so many unknowns with Fina. And uh, you know, there are known unknowns, and you go down and down the scale, and there are unknown unknowns. So, what you don't, what you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> so, anyhow, that's, that's who we are. And I hope to get uh, some answers to these questions, and I'll fill up to the report and send it to you folks. I wonder if, I mean, it would be great if we knew something before we set the tax rate, but I wonder if we can make any assumptions when we're setting the tax rate about what we might get within, what we should be able to count on within the next six months. Well, I don't know. Presumably you're going to get some money from the federal government, I think, is a stretch. The what? Is a stretch. To presume that oh, we get really? that. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> I wouldn't do that, but that's mm. just me. You know, I'm a cautious guy until you know, money starts flowing in, projects become obligated. Mm. I can't see any way mm. to not do what Brandy's done. The, was it $242,000 that were underwater for the uh, FEMA part of the economy? Mm. I would wait. And then next year, <laughs> when the money is hopefully it come in, then the tax rate hopefully would be less. Mm -hmm. So that's my report. Sorry, I don't have any more. <laughs> Again, thank you for doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we're running a little bit behind schedule, but I think if we're efficient, we can knock out a few mm -hmm. of these other other items. Um, the next. Uh, item would be the possible flood mitigation projects and just status reports um, on Buck Lake Brook and on Cabot Road. So I can tell you about Buck Lake Brook. Um, I can gather some information. Um, thanks, Diana, for the stuff that you pulled up. Oh, okay. Thanks. I've got some other information from Skip based on the flooding last year. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to get some um, information from the fire department, but haven't received anything yeah, um, but uh, the deadline for the pre-application is August 16th. That's still a solid date. So uh, this is just a pre-application. So I don't think I need to have everything that I've gathered. I just want to make a good uh, argument for why they should um, approve our pre-application. Is there a, do you have a project yet? The project is to try to do mitigation work for Buck Lake Brook, um, which is, you know, that's the project. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so I'm going to be probably putting it together this week um, and uh, sharing that with the folks at uh, CDRTC, the Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and they'll help me uh, put together the final mm -hmm. pre application. So that's the status of, of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds like both you and Alfie have some updates on Cabot Road, or maybe there's none today, which is fine. 
I just put this on on the menu just in case there was anything today we're talking about the yeah. like the seventeen thousand dollars or whatever. Well, we've been to us and said that there is perhaps mitigation opportunities to have a uh -huh. And the initial project to repair it as it is now was seventeen thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So FEMA will pay up to seventeen thousand oh. dollars for mitigation. Oh. So whether that's what you say, a ditch and all the lines, a storm line ditch, something like that. Mm -hmm. But what I want to know is the boy before it, you know, he said FEMA specification that we have to repair the road to or is it something in the infringement, which is the reprint for mm. road crews and other roads? Mm. So that's a Mm. Yeah. Right. And so and there's. Yeah, there's like offering money to. And there is someone you can ask that question of? That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, good. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, proposed animal control ordinances. Uh, Diana, I'm assuming that oh, this is um, your agenda item. Uh, yeah, I just didn't want to continue to blow this off without explaining that um, just the work involved of all the posting of notices and all that stuff. Yeah, you sent me some stuff. Yeah, you did. And this is the new stuff from this year. Maybe you want to look at that and see what it is. It has to be changed again before we go out. Oh, you want me to write the ordinance? I thought you already did. Well, that was from 2019, and as of 2019, that ordinance was treated with statutes in 2019. Was what? Right. Sure. It was right. We didn't do it. So, right. you know, so if we're going to do it now, it would be nice to have it. So you want me to take that as a test? Would you? <laughs> sure. Please? Well, yeah, I would. I'm just wondering before you go putting a lot of effort into it. Um, we've never talked about this, but if we have to continually update the ordinances, um, I'd be just as happy to get rid of some ordinances rather than update. Well, this and one was, yeah, when, the one I gave the guy today, that was from 2000. 17, maybe? No. The one I had you copy. The, the, uh, current, the, the, the current uh, animal control ordinance. I think that was from 20. As of VLCT, they were lacking a bunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I, you know, I'll look at it and update it. Thank you. But the resource we used in 2019 was after we updated it, we sent it to the VLCT. Mm -hmm. And their attorney looked at it, mm -hmm. and it was okay. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that the board follow that same mm -hmm. procedure. Mm -hmm. I'll update it, send it to you folks. I have no standing at the LCT anymore. So, they don't even talk to you. So I said, like that. <laughs> I sent you a burn ordinance that yeah. Paul Shimudi wanted us to do. So I sent the yeah. ordinance. I sent an abstract of the ordinance that you put in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I also sent you a checklist that you should follow in terms of when it should be posted, you know, time frames in which mm -hmm. it's posted, when you avoid a public meeting, and things like that. All right. Can I get just a little background on this? Um, yeah. So this is this ordinance you in 2019. The board already adopted it. The board this adopted is, this. Yes, this is an ordinance. We have binder at, in the office. Mm -hmm. Please come and look at it. They're ordinances that have already been set up by previous select board mm -hmm. members. Yeah. So we have them, and they're in place. Yeah. So it's not a matter of you adopting a new one. These are already in place. Mm -hmm. This is really yeah. deep, like this is an like update. You said, it's an update. Right. We already have these ordinances in place. 
And this is our animal control mm -hmm. ordinance that gives the uh, animal control officer the authority to deal with nuisances mm -hmm. and dangerous dogs. And, you know, in the past we had an animal control officer who would actually go door to door and make sure people had their licenses. We don't we did that a couple of years and that was enough. <laughs> is, uh, is, and, and the recommendations for the updates come from? Yeah, the select board at the time, it looks like in 2017, it was Michael Gregg, Guy Ruel, and Thomas Lindsay. Uh, so when things arise, that's when they usually get right. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, were, there were issues that year for, regarding uh, dangerous dogs that pe people couldn't walk on certain roads because dogs would uh, chase them and so on. And that was the same year that the large animal ordinance was suggested because in that same neighborhood there were horses running loose and things like that. But that, I don't think we're going to go ahead with that because you said you're not in favor of that. But the, I'm not in favor of any of them, oh. to be honest. But the updates that, came, that, that are suggested came from the legislature. The legislature. Right. But are there suggestions or they're like. Well, the, yeah. The yeah, I haven't, looked, I haven't read this for years. Could I ask a quick question? This 2019 ordinance, I think you just got skipped update, was that or update to the 2011 ordinance? Was that accepted and became part of the ordinance? Oh, yeah. Well, there's no. Oh, okay. yeah. we you were talking about 2017, yeah. so I didn't quite. Yeah, I don't. I, I thought that. So, this is the last one that was drafted and didn't go forward was 2017. And uh, I have here the adoption history. Uh, anyway, best we just. Just to clarify, though, I guess I'm asking you, Diana. Mm -hmm. um, there is no requirement for our town to have any of these ordinances, right? That's purely by choice. I don't know. I'd have to look up the statute on all of them and see whether or not we are required to have ordinances. <laughs> because how does that change? I mean, a board, a board has already approved them. And approved, yeah. But, well, no, well, they didn't go through the process well, the new one, not for the this one. one. We still have to uphold, somebody who says we have to uphold our policy. The one that we've already right. adopted. Mm -hmm. That was adopted, like, 2011, right. I think, yeah. That the, the older, still older in still in effect. So you would suggest that we just do away with that one totally? I would, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, we've already seen how hard it is for anyone to enforce anything. Um, the person who's been kind enough to be our animal control officer, um, I'm happy that he's willing to fill the role, but the things that he described doing when there's a problem with an animal are things that like if I, as a person, had a problem with an mm -hmm. animal, I would just do those things myself. I would talk to the owner. If I was being yeah, attacked or threatened, I would call the police that, myself. So I, I'm not you're talking over me. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure why it makes sense, you know, to have to have the town in charge of enforcing things that mm -hmm. we could just as easily have individuals do mm -hmm. on their own. Yeah, it would be nice. I mean, if everybody was respectful of their neighbors, we wouldn't have to have zoning either. But. I'd love to not have zoning. <laughs> that'd, that'd be on my list for things here. But. Well, those so, are things that uh, something like zoning has to be approved by the voters anyway. And, uh, this, this doesn't. Just a question. If we didn't have the ordinance, would I don't know the answer to this. Would the town have any uh, recourse at all to deal with, um, let's say, you know, in the instance that this gentleman goes to the sheriff's department and has to have an animal impounded, would the town have the ability to do that if we didn't have an ordinance? No. No. I would think it wouldn't fall to the town, no. right? We do have to pay for it. No, we have but I guess, I mean, would we have any authority to do it if we didn't have an, uh, an animal no, ordinance? No. We would not. No. It would be a liability on us. So I think there, there are some benefits in the long run, in my opinion, in the long run. I agree with you that I think it is probably always a good first step for neighbors to talk to neighbors and take care of those things. But at least sometimes some of these ordinances, and maybe we should look at them with a critical eye, are, um, 
when things get really out of hand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, maybe they help us. Not all, maybe not all, but some. Um, I guess I still am a little confused about the update, though. That we have to. There's a requirement for an update. I'm just looking at this, and uh, it's about 160. It also gives municipalities this explicit authority to regulate by ordinance the control of livestock running at large. So that's a large yeah, mm -hmm. ordinance that's in the Livestock under the mob law means cattle, horses, sheep, swine, goats, cannabis, probably a regular, regular American bison. In response to those statutory changes to the League of Cities and Towns, Max Center will review and update our model of animal control ordinance and new sources. So again, the VLCT and the Municipal Assistance Center probably will have a model statute or ordinance, a model ordinance based on statute for towns to cut and place. So mm -hmm. my recommendation would be not to do anything with that large animal. Ordinance mm -hmm. sitting in the middle. Wait till the League of Cities and Towns or something. Mm -hmm. Copy that and that will eliminate that stuff going back to them. That's if you choose if to, we choose to, to, to uh, adopt it. Yeah. Have mm -hmm. that explicit authority. If you don't choose to have that explicit authority, so be it. Mm -hmm. So Do we need any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Well, are you willing to look and to just review the new legislation and see if there's anything that affects this you, that you drafted in 2017? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It appears as though it's just the animal control office of authority that has changed. Right, I read that part. That's it? It appears as though, but I'll take a look at that. Thank you. Actually, I have 167. Okay. Can do that. All right. Thanks, Kip. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're on to updates and other businesses. Um, I think that if we jump down, it's okay if we just jump down to the town hall roof. Um, I sent both of you my first pass at the scope of work and the RFP. I um, made a mistake of printing it out. We did, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was just a first pass. On and on and on and on. Quick questions that I have. Um, Thank you for doing that. The, yeah, and it's not done, but it's, okay. a, it's a first pass. But the necessity for a project we're, at what's, what level, I think we we're going to um, eliminate the possibility of some people willing to bid on it that maybe are not bonded and the necessity for a project of this size for contractors to be bonded. And I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Okay. Because in that, in the scope of work, Michael, that you shared, Mm -hmm. For the for, was what, for the Woodbury mm -hmm. Library, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it required bonding. That, that the contractor be bonded. Um, okay. I, I mean, I would defer to Brandy on that because it, it, that would seems to imply to me that, you know, when it's audited by the LCT or whatever, that they may have required that. But mm -hmm. I don't know that for sure. I don't know why that was in that scope of work, but there must have been a reason. Yeah. I don't why. know. I never saw the, the layout of the, the library construction. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I can share. That grant's not coming through. It, it may be the specs of just the grant. Oh, this, this is for the roof that we did a few years ago. Not, not for it was an RFP for the roof. That's what he was using library. as a template, was the one that yeah, Michael yeah. did for the library. I, I and it had bonding in there that it'd be bonded. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. The insurance question. Mm -hmm. I, think insurance I have no idea why it was there, mm -hmm. but it must have been a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there some place I should check to whether it stays in or stays out? Because I know that for folks that are maybe would be interested in this size project, mm -hmm. uh, they're not. I would, I would move it out if you think it's going to 
mean, I don't know why it was in there. I don't even know what Rodney means, to be honest with you. So, um, I mean, they have to have insurance and they have to have workers well, come. Right? Yes. Concur that they do have to have insurance. For sure. Yeah. That's yeah. where we get penalized. If it's not workers' comp, yeah. right. That's okay. okay. That's where we get hit. Bonding is a big deal. That's where they put money out, right? I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, that's... They have to buy a bond and then they might get their money back. That didn't happen in the school. Oh, okay. Contractor does not put up any money. So I'll eliminate that. And then there were some pretty um, explicit, uh, because that was a shingle roof, there were some pretty explicit like manufacturer details about what types of shingles to use and when. Um, this is a metal roof, it's a little bit different, um, and I don't know how uh, formal we need to be, but I did talk to the guys at Arcade and they were going to print out a spec sheet on mm -hmm. um, like a, basically a commercial grade exterior mm -hmm. um, corrugated, corrugated metal, metal roof, roof. And, and hopefully we can kind of substitute some of those details for that. Yeah, I think the specs for the lever roof were you know, basically making sure that you're going to get a high quality asphalt. Yeah. Shingle, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The number of years that was cool. Yeah. And talking to the guys, um, the salesmen, they said that most municipal and commercial roofs that are metal are, are like a 26 gauge mm -hmm. um, roof. Where like mm -hmm. lots of homeowners will use a 28. Yeah. So I figured we'll do that for, it'll add a little expense, mm -hmm. but we'll add, do that for this, this building. Okay. So that's not done, but it's okay, well, I'm working on yeah, it. Yeah, really, thank you. Um, so with that, we can cross off a list. Uh, we'll do the approved bills and payroll orders. You missed, you missed um, I know, I'm coming back to okay. it. Change, change to open meeting law. Yeah, this is a good, good one. Uh, so the legislature made some changes. Yeah, they thought that was going to be helpful, but what they've done is uh, separated our commissions and committees into two different sectors. One, one is called advisory, and those are bodies that do not have supervisory control or jurisdiction over legislative, quasi-judicial tax, or budgetary matters, uh, which uh, means that all the others that are non-advisory are the ones that actually make decisions have either quasi-judicial or budgetary um, influence, um, legislative, meaning passing ordinances and such. I can only think of one. I think the Conservation Commission is the only one that has no such authority, but the others, even the Cemetery Commission, uh, the uh, Library Board, the Board of Civil Authority, the Board of Tax Abatement, um, the listers to some extent, the auditors to some extent. Um, they are now required to uh, record uh, in, in a designated electronic location, uh, either audio or video uh, of their meetings, which I think is gonna be a real hassle for a lot of people. It is possible to have a, an exception, a, exemption, if the town can or the committee can prove undue hardship, but the lawyer given the seminar said it's hard to claim undue hardship when everybody's phone can take, you know, recordings now. <laughs> so, Don't so, they mostly just have authority spending against the budget approved by the town? What? Don't they mostly just have authority to spend yeah, yeah, against the, the budget their approved authority, the Their authority is somewhat limited, but they, have, they are spending. I mean, they, we t went to this uh, meeting and they talked about all these different things. Uh, so uh, not all of these funds create their own budgets. Mm, so they still have the budgeting to, on, like, and, um, uh, can I throw in a suggestion? Mm. When the whole COVID thing hit, it was, it's a hundred bucks, it's an hour. You plug it in <laughs> and it moves. It's and an hour, it's, 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 it's not a hundred bucks. It's gone up. Oh, oh it's gone up. You can get cheap ones off Amazon. Oh, you can get cheap ones for sure. Um, 
Um, yeah. It doesn't need to be that they can just plug it in. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm getting concerns from different funds that they're now worried they're going to have video so you did. So, so I sent a, a memo to all those different chairmen of all those, and I got nothing in response. So I, I don't know. Maybe they've been bothering you instead. <laughs> so I mean, the planning commission, huh? as far as I'm concerned, the planning commission has no budget and it's just advisory. You know, there's only a little thing that uh, that. Uh, Gives the planning commission. And we do minutes. Hmm? We do minutes. Yeah, I know, but minutes. there's one thing where the planning commission can approve a right of way for a landlocked parcel. Right. And true. but, you know, I tried to ask that question in the Zoom meeting, but I didn't ask it in person. I asked it through the chat room, and they didn't really give me a good answer because they mentioned the ZBA and things like that. Which, are di which is different, but hopefully that little piece of the planning commission, that's really, nobody will know that. Jerome was asleep. <laughs> Nobody's going to watch. Go ahead, go ahead, Skip. I was hoping to use the Tom's Zoom account, but I tried to get on and I accessed the A what? An email address. Uh -huh. so there's an email address associated with the county. That's sent it. Oh. WRBY. With various select ones. Like abbreviation. Yeah. At gmail.com. Yeah. Gmail.com. So I put in the email address and the password, and it's soon asking, so this is a new device. You know, I'll send, or Zoom sent the six digit access code to the that email. email address. No one knows who has that email address. Hmm. Whoever set it up. Laura, Laura set it up. Oh. We first needed to do something. Oh. And um, I, I have had no problem. I mean, I was the one, I was the select board chair. All of our, we had all our Zoom meetings, et cetera, during COVID. Mm -hmm. So the address, the Zoom recognizes my laptop address, email address. Um, and there are people, um, John Reed has used it, and Natalia Zahn has used it, and didn't have any problems at all. So I'm not sure what happened. It may be an interesting thing. I think it was set up also. Yeah, mm. so. Um, it is a new way to log into Zoom. Mm -hmm. Zoom just released an update, which because <laughs> yeah. I used to be able just to log in. Yeah, you used to set up a bank and username and password. Mm -hmm. It was the first time, at least in the town's account, that I was asked to put in the mm -hmm. So I put in the email address and it just went. If that email address is just used for Zoom, share that Gmail address with everybody who uses the That's account and then you, you can do it. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder if a skip M can find it on Pam's computer someplace. Mm -hmm. now it, it. it might be on a, a assistant the assistant complex yeah. computer. Yeah. But come Wednesday, are you coming to the office? No. No, it's not. It's just a Zoom. It's, it's a Zoom. Yeah. Danielle has a corporate account. She's in work. She does. Mm -hmm. right. She's using her first personal Oh, what do you get the chance to come drive online and I'm able to maybe can, yeah, reset it to so we have a... Yeah, yeah I probably could have set it up for you too. But I'm going to try to set it up on just to, to uh, see what happens. Yeah. So regarding the select board, we're lucky to have a publicly available uh, recording. We are lucky. Yeah, and um, Skip brought up the question of whether possibly HCTV might have some proprietary interest. But I talked with Jim. Kelty. Yeah, Kelty today. He he said he had never heard that. Well, I can pick it up. I think I sent you an example. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, page. Yeah. Is it going to be a copyright infringement? Right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, he didn't seem to think that would be a problem. He was looking at the Hardwick Select Board site, and they just have a link right to the HCTV site for um, people who want to look at the wonderful videos. <laughs> so, so how that solve for all of the other committees? Yeah, no. That, that's not going to help the other. And you know, recording on a machine on a, or a meeting on a phone, you know, sure you'll have a recording of it, but it would be pretty excruciating to try to. Uh, so a thousand dollars for an owl that all the all the committees can use. Mm. Why is that such a? Well, we have so we have a whole remote. But nobody wants to learn how to do it. And one person know, it's, putting it all on one person isn't going to happen here. It, right. It's I mean, very it's, it's simple. What's simple? The owl. Um, mm -hmm. The you. owl? Yeah? Okay. No, I think I thought you said a hundred dollars and now you said a thousand dollars. The one I would look on Amazon. You can find but, cheap ones that yeah. yeah. I wonder like what the sound quality would be, you know, with the cheap ones. If you're eighteen feet from it, it's really fine. So okay. the owl, a little table in the middle of this room would solve your mm -hmm. problem. And I would invest in some name tags so that when the owl turns to look at you, right. people know that they're looking at I look at yours to try to write up your select board meeting, mm -hmm. and I don't understand what. So until mm -hmm. Robin posts or whoever posts the minutes, mm -hmm. I, I can't even write the minutes mm -hmm. from the video. You think a cheaper version of the owl would also have the 18 foot radius? I guess it would probably be case by case, right? I think somebody's going to have to volunteer to learn the ropes and teach these different board chairs how to do it. That's the Zoom, you mean? To do the recording for their meetings. I think that's a lot because especially I know it's a lot. when there's turnover I know it is with a lot, the chairs. Like, what? Especially when there's turnover, you know what I mean? Like I know. One person may not remain. I know, that's why I thought this was alarming, yes. basically. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. My opinion is this whole thing is ridiculous. It's what? Is ridiculous. Oh yeah. So, oh, I agree. I mean, for a small little town like I agree. Area, to expect. That's why I wouldn't worry about that planning commission thing. Right. But so the maybe other we should just have some. You know, iPhones are ubiquitous. Maybe we should just have somebody turn on their iPhone and mm -hmm. say, "Okay, that's recorded." And, and if you want to try to get the information from it, go ahead. I mean, that covers the legality. Well, it has to be posted. Sorry. I'm sorry. Three people talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, has, it has to be posted for 30 days after the minutes are posted. Oh, yeah. But it, and it can be an audio recording. Yeah. I, I, that it seems, audio recording yeah, that seems like the, the, the most logical solution. Let's have a digital recorder, audio recorder. I have a digital, uh, recorder, audio recorder. So mm -hmm. I, I have it because um, it was never really getting used. I tried to use I never it really figured it out. That is available, um, and you have to learn how to use it, but it's not any harder than using it. Uh, mm, but maybe some order. simple written instructions. Yeah, and it has a cane with simple written instructions mm -hmm. instead of having to go onto a website and mm -hmm. download the thing. <laughs> so we just need to communicate basically yeah. to the yeah, different boards. And so the cemetery is waiting on your decision or what's going to happen because they can't plan their cemetery commission because it's not they don't have anything to record it with. Well, so they they want the select board to decide how no. they can do it. No. But having something that's neutral like an owl that all the committees mm -hmm. can use. Well, but that recorded that Michael's got. Yeah, I was yeah. just we can't have to record the owl like the CDRPC has an owl and. It's used. It's um, it doesn't always work, and they got a good one. I mean, they spent money on it, and it's really weird. People, you know, the whole room would be here, and everybody would be a little ant-sized thing. And mm -hmm. whoever speaks up, it's supposed to focus on them, so you can see them a little bit bigger. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it would it would satisfy, and people would have to learn how to use it. You've got to have it hooked up to a computer. Etc. Um, so, Michael, do you, sorry. You just don't plunk it on the table and have it work. So, mm. do you mind bringing that back, the recorder, that, the recorder to the town hall, and then 
We don't what, need it. We don't need it, but, but then it's it's there and available for all of the mm -hmm. the boards to use but, to mm -hmm. to audio audio record their their meetings. Well, already people are asking for help on they're, they're, being trained how to use it, and I'm not qualified to do that, so I'm suggesting well, maybe somebody with else. Instructions with the they'll figure it out. Recorder. How okay. easy is it on a scale of one to ten? Did you What'd ever you have a cassette recorder? You literally push a button. It's, well, yeah, it's basically push buttons. Okay. I think that seems like a good option. We already have it. We don't have to buy something. Sounds easy. So then once as as, uh, the catch is that somebody's going to have to download the recordings right. into the website. And yeah, and if we just have one, I mean, this has already happened with this rig. Who has it? Who had it last? Where does it get stored? You know, for the people who can do it with a phone, I mean, like next week there'll be a zoning board hearing. I'm sure Skip can figure out how to record it on his Skip phone. Skip can figure out how to record it. Right, but he's not going to train everybody he's, else. He's an IT expert. So. But somebody else, um, I don't know if the Cemetery Commission has anyone or if. Who else did I say? The Board of Civil Authority, they won't need anything for a while. Uh, the Library Board. Now, Steve is interested in learning some of this stuff. So. Would it be easier to upload, sorry, would no. it be easier to upload it from a phone than it would be from the device that I have no about? idea. I, I don't have an iPhone, I don't have a cell phone, so I don't know how easy it is to upload any of that. I've never Skip can answer that. Can I, can I just... from the recorder that we have, I've mm -hmm. just used it to the old fashioned right thing I <laughs> Can I suggest that I think it's crazy that we have to solve the problem for each one individual board? I know. Like, I feel like... This is the law. Each individual board needs to figure out how to get their, their audio recording, their video recording, whatever it is. The cemetery Commission is required to do it. Yeah. They got to do it. Yeah. And, and whether they want to choose to do it with a phone or whether they choose to do it with Michael's audio recording. Yeah. Well, it's the town. So I will give it yeah. to the town clerk. Yeah. And she can oversee who has it and sign it out. But we're, we're never going to solve it for everybody. Yeah. And, and so every committee and commission needs to mm -hmm. figure it out on their own. That's why I sent them all a heads up memo and what was coming. Yeah. Does everybody agree with that? I do. Okay. I will further point out that that's right how I feel about the animal ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> that every individual should solve it on their own. Figure it out themselves. <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess we'll approve bills and um, payroll orders. And Diana, we're going to do that after executive session? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a couple of questions? Sorry? Can I ask a couple of questions? Oh, of course. Um, whoever fixed the water tub, I'd like to thank them. We've had a lot of calls back down in the office thanking us for having it get fixed. And I, don't, I don't know who fixed it. It was yeah. Dana on coffee, right? No. It wasn't? Dana was out of town. Oh. And do you have any more of the signs that the state gave us about that water tub? Yes. Because the signs that we had down there are gone. Talking about something I should have heard. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because you're both. So. I'm what? <laughs> so, so we have another, both. We have another health complaint. That yeah. Okay. Like we need the, to go look at. The one on Eric's Cove? No. Another one. Another one. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The employee just, agreement. Just, huh? Yeah, you can just write, do the employee agreement. Okay, and one possible litigation, appointment of a public officer. We probably don't need to do that one because we already appointed the dog officer. And public safety, we're going to have an opportunity to talk about what Brand, what Lizzie already talked about. Great. Who was with Mary? Thanks, guys. Bye. We'll see you. All right. So you can go too. Executive session. You're, you're, uh, huh? I, I heard it. Oh, you, uh, I made a motion. Motion, yeah. yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So before, is there going to be a chance to ask if there are any questions before you actually approve the motion? Sure. Thank <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, you. Do you expect to take any action exiting those? I think the only one we always do. <laughs> yeah. I think the only one would have been uh, the appointment of a public officer, but we did that we did as the end of control. No, sir. No. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Gerard. <laughs>